Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. My name is Lori Sigurdsson and I'm the NDP critic for mental health and addictions and I'm here with David Shepard who's the critic for health in the NDP caucus. First of all I'd like to acknowledge we're on Treaty 6 territory and also recognize the Métis people of Alberta who share a deep connection with this land. So yesterday we received some very tragic news. We heard that in April 179 Albertans died from a drug poisoning and we know that that's the highest number ever since they've started taking uh, uh, keeping a record of this and that means six Albertans died a day in April so the UCP's failed plan to uh, fix the crisis uh, Daniel Smith has said repeatedly that she has fixed the crisis is a complete uh, falsehood. That's not true at all. We know that uh, from their own uh, Government of Alberta data that 179 Albertans died from uh, opiate poisoning. And on behalf of Rachel Notley and the whole NDP caucus, our condolences go out to the families and friends of all uh, the loved ones who passed away. And we know that the UCP is not doing just the basics. They've slashed uh, funding to uh, housing and uh, people are uh, living uh, on the streets and in more and more precarious situations. There's so much that needs to be done. And uh, Daniel Smith saying that she's fixed the problem has absolutely not happened. It, this is an absolute tragedy in our province and urgent, urgent action is needed by the government and they're failing to do just the basics. Now I'll pass it on to David to say a few words. Well, thank you, Lori. And indeed, my heart goes out to everyone in Alberta who has lost a loved one in the midst of this crisis. Every one of those deaths was preventable. And the fact that we were not able to prevent them is a sign of the failure of the policy of this UCP government. And indeed, it goes further than that. We know that this government has chosen Danielle Smith to actively conceal these numbers from Albertans until after the election. Incredibly cynical and frankly a sign of moral bankruptcy. A government that has continually put their political interests ahead of public health, and we see it happening here again. Danielle Smith stood at a podium and claimed their plan was working on the same day as six Albertans were dying from drug poisoning. Six Albertans a day in the month of April. Albertans deserve transparency. Albertans deserve the truth. Albertans deserve a government that will take real action to save lives not try to hide the truth from Albertans for the sake of its own ideological policies. We with the Alberta NDP caucus will continue to stand with Albertans, with those who are on the streets working to save lives and to hold this government accountable for its actions, for the information it tries to hide, and for the need for real policy to save lives and support Albertans who are struggling with substance use. Thank you, and we're happy to take any questions. Thank you, and we'll go to questions on the phone. Just a reminder to press uh, star nine if you're on the phone, or use the raise hand function if you're joining us via Zoom. If you could say your name and your outlet at the top, that would be great. Go to our first caller. Um, my first question is uh, talking about the, the quarterly updates that we used to see. Um, I think, believe it was mentioned just a little bit earlier um, that we haven't seen as frequent of updates with the Alberta surveillance system for opioid poisonings. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, how the NDP believes more frequent updates would allow government policy to better react to the crisis. Well, more frequent data, frankly, allows for actual transparency. You can't fix a problem if you aren't measuring the problem, if you aren't tracking what the actual impacts of the policy are. And here we are, four years after this government began its ideological drive to crusade against harm reduction supports and to insist on its Alberta model. And now we see what the results are. Four years later, a record number of Albertans dying from drug poisonings. It's clear that we have a failure of policy 
that this government is clearly getting it wrong, they chose to hide those numbers instead of making those available to Albertans. So that's why more frequent reporting is not only important, I think it's required simply to keep this government honest and to allow us then to work towards implementing policies that will actually save lives. Any follow-up, Morgan? Yes, thank you. Um, so we've also heard in the past um, the province would put out an alert to an organization if there was a particularly like bad batch of drugs going around or something like that. Um, Mr. Shepard, I, I, this might be, I'm not sure if this was ever implemented when you were in government, but is that something that would be helpful, do you think, if, if organizations knew when to react to things like that? Absolutely. When we are talking about record numbers of Albertans dying, 179, six Albertans a day, obviously giving more information to folks in the community about the toxicity of that drug supply that would help organizations and folks on the ground in the community provide that warning to individuals and potentially save lives, yes, that information should be available and should be made available by government. We'll go to our next caller. Hi there, Catherine Grukowski with Alberta Today. Um, so in a statement, the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction has said that the UCP's vision for the, the province is one where um, communities are free from illicit drug use and trafficking, um, that they're, they're moving to build 11 new recovery communities, um, expanding access to no-fee addiction treatment programs, where, where is that plan falling short? Well, I mean, we're in a crisis right now. Of course, the new data, we know six Albertans are dying a day. 179 uh, died in the month of April, which is the highest numbers ever. And that plan has not been implemented. And in the process, the UCP has cut programs that we knew save lives. Supervised consumption sites have been closed down across the province and we know that those sites save people's lives. So we need a whole continuum of supports, of course. It's just that the UCP is not seeing this as the crisis it is. It is. And people are dying every day and, and our April numbers are showing that. So it falls short by not moving quick enough and cutting existing services that obviously saved lives. And, you know, thirdly, not doing the basics, not investing in affordable housing permanent supportive housing, which we know is uh, in dire need across the province. So that's some of the ways they're falling short. You follow up, Catherine? Yeah, and, and when you say that the government was hiding the data or, or intentionally holding it back until after the election, what, what evidence do you have of that? Or, or why do you say that? Premier Smith stood at a podium in April. And, made a cl and bragged, frankly, about how well their plan was working at a time when six Albertans were dying per day. If she did not know that was the case, if her officials, people in her department, did not know that was the case and, and did not raise that concern with her, that is a sign of incredible incompetence on the part of the Premier, her minister, and her government. Let's be clear, this government has been going around the country. They've been hosting conferences, bragging about the success of their plan. And now we see four years later, 179 Albertans dying in a single month. I cannot believe that they had no inkling of how badly their plan was failing. I'll do one more pass for questions. Star nine, if you're on the phone, raise hand if you're joining us via Zoom. Go to our next caller. Hello. Hi there. My name is Ritika. I'm with the Canadian Press. Um, so we're seeing the death uh, due to drug overdose across the country. Um, how much of, of Premier Smith's policies are contributing to the deaths we see in Alberta? Because uh, opioid-related deaths are not just the case for Alberta. Yes, yeah, thank you for the question. Certainly, we know that 
there is uh, <coughs> issues across the province, but no uh, across the country, but no other province except Alberta is cutting services that we know save lives, like supervised consumption services, harm reduction services. So we know that we need a whole continuum of services to support people, and uh, Alberta is going completely a different direction than other provinces who are also dealing with this. We need to augment and uh, you know support services that we know are evidence-based and the UCP is uh, disregarding that and I think that that's the key issue with uh, what's happening here in Alberta. Any follow-up? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. And that's all for today. Thank you.